if you talk about Fab's captaincy, we saw Pat Cummins the other day. Pat Cummins has come into the IPL, uh, Australian test captain, not even the T20 captain, comes in and obviously being lauded a lot, has utilized his resources well. I guess when a team is winning, uh, the captain looks good as well. Uh, but here with Faf, I think we've just pointed out with that brain's trust, uh, with whatever that management is, whoever's thinking, we, there's, a, there's a few things which are pretty glaring. Mahipal Lomra are not playing. He's in the impact sub list, but he's not playing. Uh, Glenn Maxwell doesn't bowl despite getting some big scalps in the previous games. And uh, DK doesn't come out to bat in that position. Are those, those, whether they're instinctive decisions or they're planned decisions, both seem to have some glaring holes in them. And, and to be fair, and I'll let you in, we're not just saying this after the, uh, after the match has been lost and pretend to be very clever and say this is what they could have done. Yeah. All through the 20 overs, we're sitting and watching this game, that's what we're talking about. We spoke about Lomroar before the game began, yeah. in fact. Yeah. And I don't know, sometimes the teams get into almost panic mode and stop thinking. Saying, oh, we, have, we must win today, we must win today. Whereas someone needs to just take a step back and say, you know what? Yeah, we lost three games. We win eight games, that's all right. We can lose six and still qualify. I, I just think with us, I don't think they're a good enough team on paper to not get everything right. You know, with that bowling attack, <laughs> they have to get everything right. And yeah. that's got to be tactically their think tank. Um, and that starts with the batting. Even though they've got a powerhouse batting line up on paper, you know, they still have to aim. And if I was the RCB team, I'd be thinking, well, if, if Par's 180, we really do need 200. We've got to give our bowlers at least 20 yeah. more. So you start I'd, thinking of 200 from, say, the 9 or 10 over mark, right? I, I would put, look, they play 14 games. And, and with that team, I would, I would prefer the RCB side to go absolutely to get 225 on every occasion. If they get bowled out for 120, doing it on three or four occasions out of the 14, I'd be going, but that's, that's our remit, that's what we're about, because we need as many as possible, because our bowling attack, it just isn't good enough. Because Par is anyway not winning you the matches. Par will not win. Yeah, so you've got to go way above. Attack, they're not going to win, so they've got to understand, they can't do anything about the bowling attack this year. They can't suddenly go, on, they can't suddenly go and get four or five legendary bowlers. They might do next year in the auction, but this year, how can they maximise what they've got? They've got to get big scores on the board and give that bowling unit something to bowl to. They've got, they are in Jaipur. They can just take Chahel back with them. Nick him. Yeah, just they nick him. Put him in a box. Yeah, he's and already got an RCB shirt. Yeah. And doesn't require too much space either. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> just put him yeah, A couple of guys can wrap him up and yeah. just take him along. Uh, perhaps no, but... Uh, and then he just plays under a different name. Tomo did that once, you know, Jeff Thompson. <laughs> Jeff Thompson once punched a referee and was banned. So he just came in and played the next game uh, another uh, under a different name, hoping the referee wouldn't recognize him. Are you serious? Serious. He told me this story. He used to play soccer. He used to play football. Yeah. He had a problem with the referee, so he was banned for a game or two. He came and played the next one, thinking no one recognized him. His name on the team sheet was probably something else. Yeah. Obvious with the blonde locks. <laughs> that is brilliant. <laughs> no, he was a character. He's a character. He'd mark, <laughs> he'd mark out his run-up and then just ask Greg Chappell at the start of the season, do I run off 10 or 12? <laughs> <laughs> but I also say about yeah. the RCB, I look at you know, Glenn Maxwell, he's a, he's a legendary white ball specialist. Yes. You know, he, he, he's not won a, an IPL with the RCB, neither is Virat Kohli. Yeah. You know, two great players. You know, I look at Glenn Maxwell, who plays for in the Big Bash in Australia, the Melbourne Stars. They are the star. They've never won mm. the Big Bash. And I look at some of these franchises and, and these teams, and they have legendary names. And it just proves to me, unless you get the team structure right and the team ethic right and the culture around the dressing room and the management, everything's got to be team. You know, Who does that, Michael? It, Who's responsible for that? Well, I think the captain and the coach. Correct. So the captain is worth two players. I keep saying it. Captain and the captain is worth two players yeah. in long leagues like this. Yeah. An EPL runs over four months, five months. Why is the manager important? Not just because well, he buys or sells players. Me the, to me, in the, the IPL, the, the captain, you know, with the coach, but more the captain manages the team and the players. Yeah. The coach manages the captain mm. and the team and also up. The coach has yeah. got to manage up. Yes. So the ownership of all these franchises, powerful and obviously they're all desperate for their teams to win. It's so important that the coach and with a little bit of the help from the captain manage up. So I think the pressure that they get put under and the, the stresses that come from losing games in the IPL, I would say it's probably more than they get from playing for the international teams. Yeah, yeah Because absolutely. the international teams, you, you don't have an owner. You don't yeah. have someone that can Absolutely. ring you up and say, what were you doing? Yeah. You might have the chairman of the ECB or the BC. That was a poor performance. Yeah, sorry, we'll try and improve next time. But you don't get the stresses and strains from ownership. Yeah. So this is the hardest league to play in. So here's something interesting. Gujarat Titans win one year, almost win a second year. Ashish Nehra is the coach. You put Ashish Nehra in a boardroom, there's chaos and confusion mm. because he, he will not understand the language of the owners. So Ashish Nehra is 
kept aside, separate, segregated, and Vikram Solanki deals with them. Yeah. So there's a clearly defined role. Vikram Solanki will deal with the owners. Ashish Nehra will, will look after the cricket team. Yep. And help Hardik Pandya become a better captain. Mm. And, and, and they do well. So all these things count. And I think more and more the IPL will start looking like the Premiership. Yeah. And it'll be very interesting to see which are the teams that do well in the Premiership and why. Mm. I mean, that's, that's many more games, there are 38 games, that's over five months. But you see the role of the manager there is not just to buy and sell players, True. but to ensure that the team is looking good, the team is pulling together. I think we're already in that stage in the IPL where you've just got to ensure is everybody pulling together. Yep. Players are playing 15 balls. Yeah. So you don't have to have five match winners, 10 match winners in your side. Everyone pulling in the same direction, 15 balls, you still win.